You're listening to the Morphology Podcast. Thanks for tuning in to the Morphology Podcast, aka Murph here to share interviews about biking experiences from cyclists who have pedaled to places all over. Each week we will get to know new people and explore new destinations to ride your bike. As you listen to these adventures, you may wonder, why haven't I done that yet? And a quick welcome to our newest sponsor, Hammerhead. Use code MORPHOLOGY at hammerhead.io to get a free heart rate monitor with your crew too. Well, on the show today, meet Sherry Ott from ottsworld.com. She's on today to tell us about a cool quest to finish what her father started, which is visiting every Capitol building in the U.S., and she's doing it via bicycle. She describes herself as a corporate cube dweller turned nomad traveler, a travel expert who has traveled all over the world. Her website is full of tips, tricks, and beautiful photography. When the pandemic shut down travel, she took up cycling and got hooked. So here is my interview with Sherry. All right, I would like to welcome Sherry Ott from Ott's World to the podcast. Hey, Sherry. Hello. Thanks for having me. Sure. I'm super excited to talk to you because you are like a, I don't know, a super traveler, traveler expert. You have a website (laughs) about it. And now you're kind of adding to your adventure uh, biking. Yes. Which is really fun after this many years to try something new. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Okay, so on your website, you describe yourself as a corporate cube dweller turned nomad traveler, which I just love um, because I would kind of put myself in a similar position. But explain to the listeners how you got to this epic title of travel expert because you now travel and experience adventure for a living. Yeah, it's uh, it's been quite the road. So, gosh, for the first 14 years of my, I guess, career out of college, mm-hmm. I worked in big corporations um, doing IT work. And I moved around all over the country, all over the U.S., basically, kind of moving up the ladder. And um, the last place I happened to live was New York City. And mm-hmm. I specialized in kind of working for big retailers, Gap and Coach and Best oh, okay. Buy. And, uh, you know, I did really well, but I was 36 years old and this was way back in 2006. (laughs) And I decided my career kind of chose me. I didn't choose it. And I needed to take a break because I was at that point, a time where I needed a break to go. Do I really want to be doing this Ah, until I retire? Because I didn't like, I didn't really like climbing the ladder. I didn't like where it was taking me. And a lot of my creativity Uh, that I used to have in my job had been disappearing and it was kind of replaced with a whole bunch of ministrivia and budgets and hiring and firing and it just wasn't that enjoyable. So uh, yeah, in 2006, I quit my job in New York to take a career break or what I call the career break Mm -hmm. um, for a year with the plan to travel around the world for one year and do all the things that I've ever wanted to do and uh, and specifically kind of focus on adventures where I was in shape and I thought, you know what, I might as well do them now because by the yeah. time I retire and I'm in my 60s or 70s, I don't know if I'm going to be able to climb right, Kilimanjaro. Right. So what ended up being about a year and a half career break because I stretched my budget. And at that time, I started a little website. We didn't even call it a blog. Uh, basically, for my friends and family to know where I was at and a place to put my photography. Mm-hmm. And I called it Ots World. And this was before blog was in our vocabulary. So it was it was just a website. And what I didn't know, and I didn't know how any, even though I was in IT, I didn't know how the web worked whatsoever. Right. Um, the thing, the cool thing was very authentically, people found me. Mm. I didn't know how they found me, but they did. And they started following this around the world career break. And I started getting all these followers. It was also the time when social media was just really appearing. And I was curious and had the time. So I started Twitter accounts and Facebook accounts early on. Um, and anytime you can be early in anything, especially technology, that's always an advantage. Mm-hmm. So Long story short, I ended up never going back to my IT career because I really loved traveling. Um, And 
as the world changed, uh, I stayed in this new media role that was just developing and started working with destinations and brands and so on that were eager to get into new media marketing. And uh, my blog grew and grew, and that was my living. I was a blogger, a professional blogger, which wow. wasn't even in our vocabulary. <laughs> right. Yeah, you were, then, you were really. like in the on the front line of you know yeah. blogging. Yeah. So so yeah. So I kind of I continued. So now I've actually been traveling and blogging for oh gosh, it's going to be eighteen years, I think. Wow. God. Um. Yeah, which is longer than I ever was in my corporate career. I haven't been back to a corporate office now for that long. But I've just kind of rolled with all the changes, and there's been a lot. And I've always focused on adventure travel, and mainly for women and talking about solo travel. Mm -hmm. um, so that's basically what the blog covers a lot of. I've done a lot of epic, epic trips to far-off places. I'm very, very lucky um, and your question about how I got the title travel expert, yeah. I suppose I gave it to myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's true. Uh, it's true. I mean, yeah. you are a travel expert. I bet you if I said, you know, hey, Sherry, do you want to go blah, blah, blah tomorrow? You'd probably already have a bag packed before we're <laughs> done with the phone call. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and I'd probably know some people there and a company yes, there. And yeah, yeah it's. Because in that, too, one of the ways that I kind of grew the brand and the blog and the interest was I ended up being nomadic. I, I got rid of any apartment that I had. I had a storage unit in New York City, mm. and I was nomadic for 11 years. No which way. I suppose now you, yeah, now you would probably call it a digital nomad. We, you know, once again, it was kind of at the beginning of all this. We didn't have words for these things when we started out, but I basically was homeless. Uh, for 11 years and roamed around the world and just worked and blogged and worked with destinations and companies. And in between, I would just get Airbnbs or stay with friends. And yeah, that's how I survived. And then five years ago, I decided I was nearing 50 years old and I'm like, I need a home base again. Sure. And I chose Denver. So because it was the mountains and it was outdoorsy and I had never lived here before. And so yeah, now it's been five years. <laughs> wow. And being a digital nomad is just, I don't know, it's hard to grasp that because you are just going from trip to trip to trip to trip. And yeah. um, like you said, you know, staying in Airbnbs or, uh, you know, I don't even know if it's hotels. Were there Airbnbs 10 years ago or 15 uh, no, years well, ago? Well, not when I started. Yeah. No. Uh -uh. Wow. If there had been Airbnbs when I started, I probably would have kept my New York City apartment and just rented it out as an Airbnb instead oh, of giving sure. it up. But, but I, it didn't exist. Right, so right. I just I gave it up. I put the stuff in storage. I got rid of most of my stuff. And then it sat in storage for 11 years. <laughs> wow. And then you probably, you know, made the realization that most of your stuff is unnecessary. Oh. So it was probably a yeah. really nice shedding of stuff. A quick interruption to tell you this week's podcast is sponsored by Lizard Lips Lip Balm. These great lip balms contain natural ingredients, come in a variety of flavors, and you can choose certified organic or balms with sun protection. Check it out at lizardlips.net. Now back to the show. Yes. If you ever want to downsize and you think that that's a hard process, go away from your stuff for like three to six months mm -hmm. and you will realize you don't miss any of it and you don't need it. And then you come back and you really downsize. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I rode my bike across the United States in March and it was kind mm -hmm. of a similar thought of like, you know, gosh, I'm going to miss all the, the comforts of home. And then when I got <laughs> back in, it was mid May, I was like, Oh my gosh, I have way too much stuff. I don't need yeah. it. So I'm in the process of getting rid of, you know, unload I love my car. It. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. I love to hear that. It makes me really happy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, we've talked about you being a travel expert and you've been everywhere. And the best part about it is that you share it with the world and you mentioned through a blog, but you have an amazing website simply called otsworld.com. So, I mean, along with, you know, tips, tricks, being a solo traveler, being a female traveler, you also have amazing photography. So give us a synopsis of, you know, what is on Ots World. Oh, gosh. Um, you know, I call it, uh, my tagline is travel and life experiences of a corporate American runaway. Mm. 
And so it is, you know, 85% of it is travel and it's tips on where, where it's even like how to pack. Um, I do a lot of hiking. That was kind of one of my primary thing. And I do a lot of like through hiking or in to in hiking or mm-hmm. hut to hut. And um, so I do packing lists and I would do, you know, itineraries of where to go in X or how to spend your time and all that kind of stuff. So you'll find that type of stuff, but then you'll also find just generally things about my life. We talked a little bit earlier, I think, about I foster kittens when I'm home. Mm -hmm. So I even have an article there on, like, how do you foster kittens in your own city? Mm -hmm. Things like that. So it it does kind of run the gamut, but I would say about good 80% of it is very focused travel stuff Mm -hmm. um, for all the destinations that I've been to. You'll only find uh, destinations that I've actually personally been to. I don't write about like general travel news, I write about places that I've been to firsthand. Oh, nice. Um, Yeah, which is, it is nice. I like it that way. I feel like it makes it really authentic. Mm -hmm. So when I go to a destination, I normally try to write a couple of different, two to three different articles about it, depending Mm -hmm. on how long I'm there and what Mm -hmm. I did. And one might be kind of like itinerary based, like this is what you can do here. But then I always really try to dig into kind of one narrative of stories of people I met, um, just because I, I really like writing those kinds of stories. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, and I think, you know, so I don't want to give that up. And for me, as somebody who, you know, maybe wants to go travel to a place that you've been, I, it depends on, you know, my, uh, where I'm at in my planning, which one I'd want to read about, mm-hmm. you know, if it right. is about specifics, like, okay, what do I do? I'm going to have, you know, 12 hours of spare time. Let's look at what Sherry did. Uh, versus I want to know who she met and, you know, I want to hear the yeah. story so I can see both sides of, you know, the value of both sides. Yeah, totally. It's kind of like inspiration versus tactical. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so tactical is a great word to segue into how you got into biking and this super cool quest that you're on right now, which I guess <laughs> we haven't even mentioned it yet, but you are literally – completing your dad's mission to go to every capital in the United States. He Mm -hmm. walked it. You are going to bike it. So, and you know, what's funny when I first reached out to you, I had to look it up if capital is spelled with an O or an A. And then (laughs) you and I kind of giggled about it. Like, well, we we should probably (laughs) talk about that before we get into it. But anyway, let's talk about your capital to capital quest. Yes, capital to capital with an O, because what I am doing and what my dad started way back in 1984, he started walking from capital to capital building. So grammar lesson, the O spelling refers to the actual building. And that's what he was doing. He was walking from building to building, Mm -hmm. which happened to be state capitals. Anyway, uh, yeah, so in 1984, he decided out of the blue, he was... I think 47, 48 years old and worked a full-time job. And he decided he was going to start walking from capital to capital. And I, at the time was 14. Mm. Uh, and you know, anytime your parents do anything out of the ordinary, it is not what you want as a teenage girl. <laughs> so <laughs> I hated it. Like just hated it. Not only did I just think he was weird and wasn't like my friend's parents, but I would also get, because I was 14, I would get drug along on these things. Oh, so sure. He would yeah, you'd his, have to go. Yeah. He would spend time, he and my mom, and my mom ran logistics for him and would drive and pick him up and drop him off and get hotels and so on. So since he worked full time, he would do this on his vacations and on like long weekends or if he happened to be around in that area visiting someone uh, he'd take a couple of days and walk, and he would walk probably an average of twenty to twenty-five miles a day. Wow! Um, now was he and, was he a but, hiker before all of no. this? Oh, well, so I should say he hiked. He's always been a really big outdoors person. You know, they're from Nebraska farms, and so he hiked. But I wouldn't say that like that was. I would have never said that my dad was an avid hiker or mm-hmm. walker. He never went out and walked at home. So it was just it was a very Forrest Gump thing to do before Forrest Gump. <laughs> honestly. Right. Like that's my best way I can describe it. Like one day he just started walking. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, when I've asked him about it now in the past, he, he talks about, he's like, I don't know. I just wanted to do something different. And, and I said, well, why didn't you just, you know, whatever, go walking around where we live. Why did you have to do capital to capital? Yeah. Like, why'd you have to take this on? 
he's like, I don't know. He's like, you might as well go big. And he's like, it just seemed like a, a good purpose. And now I love being different and even in everything I do. So it's like even the places where I travel or whatever, like I don't want to go where everyone else goes. Mm -hmm. I want to blaze my trail and I want to lead and explore mm -hmm. and I want people to follow. So in that sense, I'm very much like my dad. My dad was not a social person, though. He didn't want anyone to follow. He didn't oh. want anyone to even really know about it. He didn't <laughs> want to talk about it. Um, but me, I'm the opposite. I'm like, everyone, come join me. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so, yeah, he took this on and he created this. It's hard to explain, but he created a map and paper map. So remember, before Internet, before cell phones, before um, Google Maps, any of this stuff. So you he, said that this was in 1984, this kicked off, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He would order these like really detailed topographical maps from the U.S. government to try to figure out his routes. Mm. Uh, and he was an engineer, so this, he loved this stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, But his route that he determined around the United States, so it's supposed to be the lower 48 plus Washington, D.C., so 49 mm. stops, basically, Um is all connected in a counterclockwise fashion. So, for example, he would go from, he started with Springfield, Illinois, because that's where we, I grew up in Illinois, Springfield, Illinois to Madison, Wisconsin. And then he'd go Madison, Wisconsin to St. Paul, Minnesota, mm. St. Paul, Minnesota to Pierre, South Dakota to Bismarck, North Dakota to Helena, Montana. So, as you can see, they were all like connected mm -hmm. in a counterclockwise fashion. But he, because he was still working full time, he he couldn't do them all at once. Mm -hmm. So what he did is he would start. He had a number of them like in progress and he might not be able to finish it. Well, normally he would never be able to finish it in one go because it was just too big of distances. Mm -hmm. So he would walk, let's say, for four days and then he would pick a place that, you know, he could remember that was going to be like a good um you know, that wouldn't go away, basically, like a tree that would get cut down. He'd pick an actual, like, landmark. And he knew that when he came back there, again, someday, he would start at that landmark mm. and then continue walking. So he, you know, at any one time, he probably had about, I don't know, eight different routes in progress. And then he would just, like I said, as we kind of went there, he would start doing some more walking there where he left off and eventually finish that particular route. Like uh, a good example is St. Paul, Minnesota to Pier, um, South Dakota, because mm -hmm. that's the one that I actually picked up and finished last month. So he started that, I want to say, in 1986. And the last time he walked part of that route was 2009. And that was his oh. last walk that he really did. So he did that over years like I said, my mom ran logistics. They would, um, no cell phones, so they would have to be very specific of how they were going to meet each other and where he was going and so on on these paper maps. And they would leave post it notes on stop signs oh, wow. to communicate. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and there were plenty of times where we lost him. And, you know, this was another thing that I hated about it when I was a kid because I think I was scared. Um, the times when we lost him and we couldn't find him, uh, you know, we'd have to call the police and my mother oh, was wow. crying. And, you know, you never want to see your parents cry. And right. it was just very traumatic for me. And so I'm just like, why can't you be like everyone else <laughs> and just be normal? Well, and I'm assuming <laughs> you as a teenager, you're certainly not going to walk with him. You're going to be in the back seat of the car. Oh, no. You know, I, my mom and I went to malls and went shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, that's amazing. Okay, so, you know, fast forward to we're now in 2022, and yeah. your dad is not going to complete his mission. So somehow, yeah. either he talked you into it, or you woke up in the middle of the night and said, oh, I got to finish this. It was kind of the latter. I think, you know, as I got older, out of teenager dumb, I grew to tolerate it probably in my 20s. And in my 30s, I started thinking it was it was kind of interesting. And in my 40s, I thought about it and I'm like, that's really cool that no one else has ever done that. Mm -hmm. Like in all these years, he picked something so unique mm -hmm. and interesting that no one's recreated it. Yeah. And it's really a shame that 
he didn't finish. And he has all these notes. He would talk into a little tape recorder and take notes and logs and so on. So that was always up in our attic and I would see it. We had this old paper map with yarn and pins that he would keep in our house and so on. So I just, I think in the back of my head, I always thought that it needed to be finished Mm -hmm. because it was, it was just, it was cool to me. It became cool weirdly. And I never thought, well, I looked into it once before about, like, could I pick up and walk this? And then I realized there's more than 8,000 miles left when I look into it, oh, when I geez. looked at his routes and yeah. so on. And he finished, um, he completed 23 of the routes. Uh, he had about, I think, eight in progress. Mm-hmm. Um, so that basically meant that he had 26 routes to finish remaining. And that equated to about 8,000 miles. And walking Um, 8,000 miles is a world of difference than driving. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And he had already walked about nearly 5,000 in his that he completed. Yeah. Um, So he did a lot. But, yeah, I think in my head I thought this would be really, this needs to be finished. And I've always thought about, you know, as a writer now, you know, what could I do with this? However, when I looked at it, like I said, and saw how much was left, I'm like, oh, you know what? I do not want to walk this. As much as I love hiking, (laughs) the idea of walking from Carson City, Nevada to Phoenix, Arizona does not appeal to me. Right. Um, so, So I kind of put it away again. And then the pandemic hit and I couldn't travel. It was during the pandemic that I took up biking. I was never a biker. Ah. Uh, I was always a runner or a hiker, but then I had knee problems and, you know, whatever. I took up biking. I bought a bike off of Facebook, and it was my way to get out and explore during the pandemic in and around Denver, which prior to the pandemic, even though I lived here, I didn't spend much time here because I was always on the road about Mm -hmm. 80% of the time. So it was my way to kind of get that travel bug out of me. And I could ride all over and we've got great trails here in Denver that I realized and learned about. And so everything was very new and exciting. And and then the second year of the pandemic, I decided I'm not riding 50 miles on this crappy commuter bike anymore. (laughs) Time to upgrade. Um, I should should get a new bike, a proper one. And um, long story short, I ended up, because of the inventory shortage, getting a bike that I wasn't at all planning on getting, but it was really, really nice. And I walked out of the store because they happened to have it in inventory. The mm-hmm. only thing they had in inventory with a Trek uh, checkpoint gravel bike. Oh, nice. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and um, once I really kind of got into that, I think I was on a ride one day and it just hit me. I'm like, wait a minute. I love riding. I loved riding. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, I don't have to walk this. I can make it my own. And I can finish this by bike, which is slightly faster and more interesting to me. Mm -hmm. And that way it's mine, too. Last summer, then, I went when I visited my parents in South Dakota. I talked to my dad about it to see if he would be okay with it. And he's 86 now. Um, Mm. My mom and dad are both still alive. They're doing great. He can still walk a few miles a day without a problem. Wow. Uh, He was okay with it. Like, I can't say because of just my dad is who he is. He's, he wasn't like jumping for joy or crying or anything like that. <laughs> he was, an, you know, he's an engineer. He's just like, yeah, that would, that would be okay. I'll hand over all my stuff. And it was at that time where I kind of started really digging into what he had left. And I devised the plan to do kind of this handoff of the project, mm-hmm. which would include finally finishing that St. Paul to Pier route that had been going on since 1986. <laughs> And the last time he walked was 2009. Let's let's get this one out of the way, right? Yeah. There was about 200 miles left to get into Pier. And um, I decided, well, why don't I ride that? And since my parents live in South Dakota, they can join me in the last, I don't know, couple of miles. We can all walk in together. Oh, very cool. So that he could finish his last capital. Yeah. So that's what we did. Does that does that map with the yarn still exist? 
A quick interruption to introduce our newest sponsor, Hammerhead. For a limited time, you can get a free heart rate monitor with the purchase of a Hammerhead Carew 2. Visit hammerhead.io right now and use promo code MORPHOLOGY at checkout to get yours today. As you know, I use the Hammerhead Carew 2 and love it. I'm heading to Lincoln soon for a gravel event called Gravel Worlds and check this out. On the Gravel Worlds website, they provide the routes for the event. To get this ride onto my crew too, I opened up my account on my laptop, copied the URL of the route from the event website, and poof, the route is now on my device and ready to keep me from getting lost in rural Nebraska. Check it out at hammerhead.io, and don't forget to use code MURPHOLOGY at checkout. Now back to the show. So when I went to do this last month to kick all this off and, and do this whole plan, uh, I recreated it. I went up to the attic, got the old map. It's still the old map. I got mm. my got out my mom's yarn and we recreated it. So yes, I do have it, <sighs> so and I'm gonna awesome. keep it. I actually brought it back with me to Colorado, and it's sitting right now in my little studio apartment. But it's uh, it's really it's cool. Yeah. I love it. It's very old school. I love it. And I um, I did follow you on Instagram uh, when you just did your capital to capital. Uh, I think you ended up in South Dakota, correct? Yeah. So I did the I finished off pier and then um, then I went on on my own and did pier to Bismarck since I was there with my bike and it was only a couple hundred miles more. Mm. Um, so I finished two out of the 26 that I had to do two are now done <laughs> just like that wow and, and so I'll, I'll tell you this like changing the yarn on the little old map because I changed the color of yarn when I complete one was the most rewarding thing ever <laughs> <laughs> well there's there's something to be said about a visual something you can touch you know yeah. I I still I don't know maybe I'm old school but I would love to have a map in front of me and say this is where I'm going and now I'm done. Like, how exciting. It is. It is. And I just, yeah, I'm so happy we kind of got this one out of storage and are using it again. Sure. And so, like, can you give us a little bit of info about, you know, these two states that you've, I'm sorry, these two capitals that you've mm -hmm. visited? You know, you're on your bicycle. Do you have support? Are you carrying all yeah. your gear? Are you on, you know, there's no way that you're on the interstates while you're pedaling no, so i'm trying I, not to be i'm right. terrified <laughs> yeah right um yeah i mean first of all i am brand new to this so everything about this sport and bike touring is new to me and it's been really fun learning about it but i'm also like completely befuddled by so much of it too i'm like i don't know how am i supposed to do this and how do i do that right. and that's why um i actually you know tried to contact friends like ryan doozer here Mm -hmm. uh, who you just had on to get advice on what gears gear to use and how to do different things. And it's been really, everyone's been really helpful, but I basically, I was on my own and I had one person, um, running logistics for me. So I call them the logistics queen or King. Mm -hmm. And basically they're just driving my car and either going up 10 to 12 miles or whatever. And it's someone there then at least that I can meet up with occasionally Plus, they can also kind of see what the shoulder or what the route looks like up oh, ahead, sure. and we can make adjustments mm -hmm. if we have to, because I am not comfortable at all riding on big roads or anything like that. I had to do that for the first time, and it terrified me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that was that was the main way I did it. I used, um, I got a bike computer, like everything is new to me. I got a bike computer. I used Komoot to make the routes and load that to my bike computer and followed that pretty much. And I, because I'm new to this, uh, I was only doing about 50 miles a day because that's all I've ever really done. Mm. And I had never done multiple days of 50 miles. I had really? maybe done two days in a row. Yeah. So I basically did 10 days <laughs> in a row and uh, it was hard. The other thing that I, in that part of the world, and maybe you encountered it as you went cross country, to try to stay off of some of the busier roads with no shoulders, yeah. I ended up on these gravel farm roads and I, the good news is I have a gravel bike, so I was prepared for that. Yep. Um, but, oh, my God, like 30 miles of gravel was yeah. brutal. Gravel is never, a completely, di that. completely different <laughs> type of experience than being on pavement, like in many yeah. ways. Yes. 
oh my God, I cannot believe I did not bite it. I don't know how many times. And then of course, <laughs> as you experience in Iowa too, the winds, there was one day, you know, you have to adjust all the time, right? As right. you know, like, so you wake up, it was over a hundred every day. So I try to get on the road really early and I'd mm -hmm. bike for like four to five hours and then get off by the time it hit like 87, 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. And then I would try to rest and recuperate and then get up early the next morning and do another 50 or so miles. And then the winds, I had one day where we had 40 mile an hour wind gusts. Oh, I couldn't man. even keep the bike up. Right. I was on gravel that day. I was supposed to be on a highway that had a okay shoulder, but I'm like in wind, I don't, all these big semis were passing me and I'm like, nope, I don't want to be there. So I ended up rerouting onto gravel roads and I made it about 30 miles and finally had to give up. Mm. I'm just, I, yeah, it was hard, but it was also, so the route that I finished into pier was very farmy, you know, lots of farm roads and, you know, kind of simple. The route then that I took from pier to Bismarck mm -hmm. was, it's called the Lewis and Clark route. And it is beautiful, mm. very long, long hills. And it follows the Missouri River. Oh, nice. Uh, roughly. I mean, sometimes you see it, sometimes you don't. But, um, and it's on back roads, but the back roads really are not traveled very much at all. So that was really, really lovely. Mm -hmm. uh, I did run into some, I ran into a couple of gravel days those days too. But uh, it was great. And then as part of this, because I still am a travel writer, and part of my goal is to be able to share these places in the U.S. and these specifically capital cities with people of like, this is what you can do there and this is why it's cool. And it was fun because I got to know Pierre a little better and I met up with some biking group uh, there and kind of met some of the locals and talked about the biking scene there and then toured all the capitals. The capital buildings themselves are fascinating, I have to say. Mm -hmm. um, you get some really great stories and all of them have tours that they give. So we toured that. I found it really funny that the capital of North Dakota in Bismarck is, I think it's like 18 or 19 stories high. And that is the tallest building in all of North Dakota. Wow. Um, so it was fun as I was finally biking into the city, you could see it from far away because it was by far the tallest building they had anywhere. <laughs> You're like, I'm, like, I'm that going must that be way. The capital. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> So when you so, think yeah. of, when you think about like you know the whole you know you spent most of your life hiking and walking and traveling and being in a car and to switch gears and now you're still traveling but you're doing it at you know 10 or 15 miles an hour um mm -hmm. for me it's my favorite mode of transportation but I'm also you know into biking five or five or seven days a week so my yeah. mindset is wow. different than yours but can you like explain how it felt to be able to pedal and look around and see things that you don't see from a car? It's beautiful. It breaks. I think whenever you go slower like that, and it breaks life down into simplicity, mm. uh, which I think is why we all come back and say, I don't need all this stuff. I can live a more simple life. Yes. But it is. It's simple. It breaks it all of a sudden, all that you really care about is, you know, going your distance for that day, eating and sleeping mm -hmm. and just looking around. And it, and all the other stuff in, in the world seems to melt away for me. It's very similar when I do like long distance hiking and stuff like that too. It's just, it's such a meditative state Yeah, and I love it and we need it. We need it so much in today's world. Yes. And so... That's what I, as soon as I got on the bike, it was crazy. Day one, as soon as I got on the bike, like all of these memories, like childhood memories and stuff came back to me. Oh, and it was just this, I don't know why, like it just, because finally we slow down mm -hmm. and we're able to kind of free our mind a little bit mm -hmm. and think about things. And that on top of the fact that like, yeah, for me going through these new landscapes is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, I love the slower pace. I love it, uh, especially because I'm probably a type A person. So, you know, making me slow down is great. Right. <laughs> yeah, but you don't I have a choice. Like it it, <laughs> yeah, it, it frees my mind mm -hmm. and opens up my mind to all kinds of new beauty and thoughts around me. And I think, you know, when I look at, uh, I went through, I think it was eight states when I went across the country, and I was blown away at how different 
each part of the country and actually each part of a state can be. You know, there's Mm -hmm. so many travel opportunities within the United States that are also like, you know, who knew that there were sand dunes in this state or that there were mountains here or glacier, you know, remnants here. Like just, I don't know. I loved it. Yeah, it's true. Like I can tell you that North Dakota, especially around the Missouri River with these like little kind of rolling hills and big wide open spaces looks just like Mongolia. Oh, wow. It does. Wow. The, the difference is we have power lines and roads, and they don't. Mm. Um, but that landscape is the same. And so, you know, I think that is one of the things I'm really excited about. Really, for the past, whatever, 16, 17 years, I've spent a lot of time, or let's say pre-pandemic, I spent a lot of time international travel. So you'll see a lot of stuff on my site that's all international. Mm-hmm. Um, and the pandemic also forced me to kind of obviously be more domestic and this is fun for me. It's it's something different and new to be able to, you know, really kind of see the United States, especially at this slower pace, and especially because the capital cities are not normally the big, well-known cities. Mm. Um, so it's bringing, you know, some eyeballs to these other places and states that don't get as much exposure, mm-hmm. and that is what really always drives me in travel. Like I always want to bring exposure to places that don't always get a lot of love. Right, right. So and so that uh, really resonates with me. And just like walking into a capital, like, you know, brings me back to childhood memories. Because, of course, you know, when you're a kid, you took the bus with your class and went to your capital and saw it. And, yeah. and then to see the capital as an adult – you know, the actual building is so yeah. grandiose, like everything's marble and carved and, and yeah. crazy paintings. The history and... of it, it, the history of the architecture alone is so interesting. Mm-hmm. The Pier Capital had all these really cool, like, like hidden things that the artisans, you know, the workers did, like in the tile work. And it was so cool. And North Dakota was all... Oh, what I get art deco like oh. from the outside it kind of looked really boring and then you went inside and the whole thing was art deco with wow. woodwork and gold and I was just like holy crap <laughs> you know this is that's really cool yeah. And, yeah you learn all kinds of fun little things so I, I look forward to that and you know I don't know what I'm gonna do with all this I don't know if it'll turn into a book or whatever but yeah. I will say this first the first route that we did um or that I did with my friend who ran logistics she's a videographer so one of the things I am oh. trying to do is put together a a small documentary on this story mm-hmm. and so we interviewed my dad and we went you know like we spent a lot of time with the background and getting that on film because as I said my parents are 86 and I don't mm-hmm. I don't know if they will be around when I finish this. Right, right. So it was important to me to get this, like, down and and get it really recorded. And it's pretty cool that you were able to coordinate it so that your dad was with you when you arrived at the Capitol in South Dakota. Yeah. Right? You guys all kind of walked in together. Yeah, it was so cool. I'm envisioning it. It just seems like a really cool moment. But yeah. Uh, which which states are on your list next? Oh, so that's what I'm doing now. So now since I proved that I can do it, <laughs> uh, or that, that I'm capable, and I worked out a few of the kinks of how to do it, uh, now I am looking at four or so, four to five maybe routes a year oh, nice. in between my other travels. Like, mm-hmm. So I'm not going to do it all at once unless, I don't know, who knows, maybe I'll change my mind as I get going. But my dad has so much of the, he did a lot of the Midwest because that's where we lived. And so that was nearby. And he did a lot of the East coast because those were little short ones that he could do um, somewhat quickly. Mm-hmm. And he did a lot of the South because they would go there and vacation in the winter. So that leaves the West. I have a lot of the West and I have the big, big distances in the West. So, but uh, some of the next ones I think that I have my eye on is I'm trying to figure out, of course, climate wise, you know, where, what routes could I do in the winter? Mm -hmm. Um, And one of the ones that's left is Phoenix to Santa Fe, which may be a decent winter one that I'm looking at, yet everyone tells me it snows in Santa Fe. So Mm. I have to kind of think through when that would be a good time. And that's close enough for me to be able to drive to. I think next summer I will try to either do Nebraska, Iowa, 
mm. for Montana, finish the Montana one, and then go on to like Salt Lake City. Mm. Uh, start to do those. Because those are ones that I can all pretty much drive to. One of my big unknowns, because I'm a beginner, is how do I do like New York? Because I am going to have to ship my bike, I guess, and then rent a car and try to put it in the back. And so that all becomes, yeah. I haven't tackled that yet. Yeah. <laughs> and it's wow. overwhelming to me. And for each of these, the other biggest thing, biggest hurdle that I have that probably worries me the most is I have to find someone that'll come and do logistics for me. Right. Um, I mean, I, granted, I'm sure that you probably bike packed your way across the U S and so on. And I just, and I may do that on some of them. I'm just very novice on that right now. Mm -hmm. And the thought of having to carry all that water and food is really overwhelming to me right now. Yeah. Well, I just, you're, you're basically putting, putting your home on your bike. So you have, yeah, you know, your clothes, your tent, everything, and you really don't get a break from the bike ever. So it is definitely yeah. a, a different mindset. But I will tell you, if timing works out, I would love to be with you when you hit the Capitol here in Iowa. It would be such yeah. a fun bike ride to, you know, if it's from Nebraska to Iowa. So count me in it is. Uh, if that and works actually, out. Actually, he actually has started that one walked out of Lincoln. He's somewhere in Iowa, but he has not finished it. So oh, okay. yes, I do have a small section yet of Iowa. So I would love to get that one done. Yeah. And then that's yeah. another one I can tick off. Definitely. <laughs> I will wow. pick you up on that. <laughs> yeah. And that's not only would, am I looking for people who are willing to kind of, you know, drive along and do just, you know, be my support vehicle, be my support. And, you know, I'm basically putting them up in hotels and feeding them, but I would also love, love, love to have people join me on the bike mm-hmm. rides too. Like, yeah. And that's what I envision. And I'm also hoping because I have a background with working a, with a lot of destinations, mm-hmm. um, tourist destinations, and I, you know, I'm going to also pull upon those relationships because I am still a travel writer and, you know, try to get help from them. So like visit peer actually helped me uh, with some, accommodation stuff and Mm. so on so like there's ways that I can kind of piece things together but I really do want people to join me yeah well and it's a it's a you know a love relationship on both ends because states want to you know have you showcase the cool things that are happening while you bike through yeah and I'm just kind of getting to also know and understand the different kind of cycling outfitters and players in this whole world. Mm. Uh, so like one of the things that Ryan Van Duzer had told me about was adventure cycling and yes. their maps and routes. And I am obsessed now. So mm-hmm. I will probably reach out to them and see, I don't know, like, you know, eventually as this gets bigger, I, I hope to get, you know, some partners on this and bring more exposure and write for some of those places mm-hmm. and, and that kind of stuff. So yeah, That's adventure my... adventure cycling oh. is the resource that we used for the, our cross country right. trip. You know, their maps are uh, out of this world. So, yeah, take, take a look it's at just... even online. And I'm sure most listeners, um, you know, this is a biking podcast, so they've probably heard of adventure cycling. But to go, you know, it's a nonprofit group, and you can buy mm-hmm. maps for like fifteen bucks, and then it tells you everything that you would want to know about biking. So. Oh, I was going to say, I actually used one. Of, I did use one of their maps on the pier to Bismarck leg, and oh, it was okay. great. I got a paper map, and I also took their uh, uh, GPS files and yeah. downloaded it. Yeah. And they were great. Yeah. So awesome. I will definitely be digging into them more. Yeah. Well, um, I kind of asked you this at the beginning of our interview. Um, you know, you're fairly new to biking, at least traveling and biking. So I was going to ask you if you've taken your bike on other travels, but I think I already know that the answer is capital to capital is your only bike travel. But, and yeah, then I'm, I mean, or is that I not? have done a couple of other little trips, okay. um, but with e-bikes because I wasn't in shape. And so they gave me an e-bike and I'm oh, like, sure. Oh, I could do this. Yeah. I did it in Spain. Um, but, but now this has opened up a whole new world of me for travel riding though, too, yes. because in fact, on this week, this coming week, I'm taking off on a press trip to Madison, Wisconsin. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to be uh, meeting people from Trek and Trek Travel. And I'm 
getting one of their bikes and going out and doing some long rides around that area and going to be writing about it. So it's fun. You know, everyone needs to change things up every once in a while. And I like it because this is still within my realm of travel. Yes. But yeah. It's just new and fun for me. Oh, it's exciting. And you mentioned, which we're going to talk about in a second, that, you know, you have an upcoming trip in somewhere in the months ahead to Ireland. <laughs> and right away, yeah. I'm like, oh, my God, that is on my bucket list to actually do a bike tour in Ireland. So that yeah. segues to what are some of your upcoming adventures? <laughs> well, they are definitely more bike heavy these days. So uh, for the whole fall, I'm actually going to be in Europe. Well, Europe and Australia. But um, yeah, um, so I'm heading to Ireland. And there I actually also run or host tours mm -hmm. uh, for my readers and followers on my social media and blogs. So I'm running one of my Ireland hiking and biking tours there. And then I head over to Italy to hike uh, Hut to Hut the Dolomites. Wow. And then I head to Switzerland, and I'm going to be biking and hiking from Zurich to Lugano. Gosh, I'm doing more like biking in small towns there. And then uh, then I head over to Australia in an area called uh, Melanesia, uh, which is basically Papua New Guinea, Solomon Islands, and um, Vanuatu. And I'm doing an expedition uh, cruise there, just the small ship cruise to all these remote islands. So no biking on that one, mm -hmm. but a lot of fun travel, hiking, bird photography, and really cool cultural stuff. And I love um, that you can call this uh, your, it's your life, <laughs> it's your job. It's super, super inspiring. Yeah, it's, it is really, really great. Um, I'm, yeah, it's going to be really exciting. So and you did yeah, mention I hope people follow along. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say you did mention that people can sometimes join you on some of these trips. Yeah. So give us an idea how how can people follow you or join you? All of that good stuff. Ah, well, let's start with social media. That's the easy way. So every one of the trips that I do, including the capital capital stuff, um, I put up stories and posts on Instagram mainly and Facebook are my two primary areas. So if you're on those, that's a really easy way to follow me. Uh, you can find me at Oxworld, O-T-T-S-W-O-R-L-D. Mm -hmm. um, and I put up extensive stuff on there. I think you said you follow my Instagram stories. And you probably saw some of the biking stuff. So yep, yep. Um, it's, it's quite extensive. And then even on all these travels, I continue to share my live travels of all this stuff that I'll be doing in Ireland there. Uh, and then after the fact, I write about it on my blog, otsworld.com, so you can read about it. And then um, as far as how you can join me, so uh, I have a newsletter. Um, I don't know, you know, it, there, I can put a link or I can give you the link or whatever, but I yeah, have a newsletter that... that yep. Yeah, that I always put out, and I that's where I kind of announce all of my, I call them Ots World Tours, um, as well as kind of where I'm going next and what's happening now. Now I have a whole section on Capital to Capital and what's happening with that. Mm. So that's probably a really good way to also stay updated if you're not on social media. Yeah, the tours that I have coming up, Ireland, uh, El Salvador, a surf and yoga retreat for women in January, which is fabulous. Mm. Um, and then this winter, for the first time, I'm running an Alaska winter tour for people to um, kind of knock off bucket list items like northern lights, dog sledding, like mushing your own dog sledding team, climbing on glaciers, doing snowshoeing. So it's going to be super fun. That sounds amazing. I spent a lot of time looking at all your photos and your info about this trip. So uh -huh. <laughs> Not saying I can do it, but man, I did some dreaming while I was looking at it. And yeah. also, uh, also, I wanted to point out for listeners, if you go to your Instagram account, you did a, a, a really cool live where you kind of talked oh, yeah. about the capital to capital. You were at your parents' house making ice cream, I think. Yeah. And you're, you know, you got to talk to your dad and kind of explain what you're doing and why you're doing it. I, I thought it was yeah. really, really fun to watch. Oh, thank you. I'm glad yeah. someone watched it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And also I'm trying to, if you go to Instagram, you know, I have highlight reels or whatever highlights. And so for each capital, I just put those up. I kind of put up the highlights from each capital ride. Mm -hmm. um, so that's also a way if you, if you didn't get to see it or follow along, then it, you can still see that, see kind of the best of. 
Excellent. Well, Sherry, thank you so much for uh, coming you. on the podcast. It was really, it's cool to hear about everything that you do. And then specifically, the Capital to Capital adventure is really, really, really awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm glad you think so. I'm, yeah. I think about it all the time and I worry about it, but I'm really, really excited to do it. Like, I'm, I'm so excited to have yeah. a new purpose. Yes, and I'm excited for you to hit Des Moines, Iowa, and hopefully, yes. if I'm not biking with you, I'll be there to cheer you on and to give you a yes. tour of the yes, city. Yes, I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thanks again for being on the podcast, and good luck with all your future. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, listeners, that's it for this week. Email me at morphologypodcast at gmail.com if you have a topic or the name of a cyclist you find interesting. Support my podcast at patreon.com slash morphology and visit both my Facebook and Instagram pages for daily entertainment. Also, a quick shout out to Simmons Electric for sponsoring this episode. I have more great episodes in the pipeline, so I hope you continue to be a Murphology Podcast listener. Thank you. Thank you.